Hi and welcome. We have finally reached part 2, the more practical one. Let's recap the content of this chapter. We we'll start in premise from the hot and cold side of the display, whether it be the TID of the F-14 or the B-Scope similar to other modern aircraft. Then we will discuss the game plans used to perform an intercept, but only from the perspective of geometry manipulation. Lastly, we will finally shoot something, and we will see the impact of poor plain rubbish geometry on the performance of the missiles. The first concept we discuss is the hot and cold side of the display. Hot and cold are a way to describe the changes of the geometry over time. Hot means that the LS is decreasing, cold that it is increasing. This is fundamental as we may have situations where the TA is too high for a missile shot for example and we have to correct right away. And we can do that immediately if we know where our noise should point. So as we know CC captures TA and thus acts as a delimiter between cold and hot side. On a B-scope, and we see here represented an image taken from the P825-17 based on the T45, the abscissa represents the ATA, the ordinate, the range. I've chosen this image because it resembles the Ornet and the Fighter Falcons more than the Tomcats did the wood. Let's ignore the within visual range limit for the moment, and here we see a target, almost on the nose, at a certain range and is pointing towards the left. If we replicate the image in our mind, we see the target drifting. Now let's consider the TID as an example of a non B scope display. I have represented both the aircraft stabilized mode on the left and the ground stabilized mode on the right. The latter is somewhat similar to the F10 map, a god's eye view. I found out years ago that the vector displayed on the aircraft stabilized mode on the left is the result of the Euclidean subtraction of vectors and has interesting properties. For example, in a zero cut situation, it points straight downward. When on collision instead, the vector points toward the symbol of the Tomcat at the bottom of the display. Personally, I find the TID much more intuitive than the Bisco, but each one has pros and cons. To help you to understand how the displays work, I have decided to create a simple scenario in my tree. Imagine this is a display similar to the F-14 tactical information display, or the crew's own point of view during an intercept, or the radar perspective as well. So, why are my three? Uh, simple, aeroplanes fly too fast to allow us to appreciate the angles, especially TA and ATA. It is hard to appreciate the changes, perspective-wise, on the side of a 3D model when you are closing at twice the speed of sound. So here we have a much better visual feedback and a perspective different from the usual top-down used in common sketches. Also, I challenge you to find someone else using boats in our material to explain aircraft inside the geometry. So, we have two boats, we are in one, and we are traveling about 90 cut, DOP left to right, TA and ATA ballpark between 40 and 50 degrees. And in this exercise, we use the drift to assess whether the target is on a collision course, and we identify which side of the screen is cold and which one is hot. In this first example, the target is almost stable in its relative position, therefore we are close to a collision course situation. However, as the range decreases, drift is present increases. The other boat is now drifting left, out of our field of view, and if we were in an aircraft, our radar. We are therefore passing in front of the boat. Have you noticed how initially we were looking at its side and eventually we have seen its front? Uh, that's the target aspect, and we have decreased it. Therefore, we have made the intercept hotter, and the boat was on the hot side of our imaginary display. Second example, we immediately notice the drift towards the right. The target aspect is increasing and eventually we will see the rear of the boat. The target is definitely on the cold side of our display. So, last example, focus on the relative position of the second boat. See how it is not changing? That's because we are on a collision course, and we would have hit each other if the AI did not slow down in the last few meters. This example should demonstrate how the TID probably shows the situation in a simpler way than a biscope, but nevertheless, both displays are fairly intuitive to use once you recognize what they actually mean. Another example, the game plans displayed in this slide refer 
to the elementary techniques to manage lateral separation in order to complete an intercept usually through a stern conversion turn. The first example, starting on the left, shows that the TA is too low, thus we need to use a cutaway to build the angles. So imagine us having a target on our nose, TA and ATA almost zero, so we turn hard to place the target on the cold part of the display. Next, we have that the lateral separation satisfies us already. As discussed, we therefore turn to zero cut or parallel to capture LS until it is time for the next move. Third example, the TA is already good enough, so what do we do? Yeah, we turn to the collision course, thus capturing TA, and then we drive it down until we get to 10 nautical miles slant range. Lastly, TA is not good enough, it's too high. This example is meaningful as it is a common condition when employing missiles. Therefore, we need to grind down the TA, and we do it by placing the target on the hot side of the display. And we continue until we reach the desired value of TA, which is then captured by CC, and the rest you know already. If you look closely, you will see that the sketch shows a CC, and you may also recognize a situation where cut is greater than collision. So I hope that these examples have shown you how these notions we have discussed in the previous part have actually a purpose, and can help to reach our goal or improve our geometry. And finally, we start shooting things. So players, ab initio especially, have the tendency of using only pure pursuit when engaging hostile targets. When TA is low, uh, this is somewhat fine, but otherwise it is a great way to trash a missile. I discussed this topic before, showing how uh, something as simple as CC can instead greatly improve the efficiency of a missile. So let's start by the beginning and watch this engagement. We start at 70 nautical miles ish, and I begin to correct to uh, pursue or collision at about 60 nautical miles. Initial TA is about 45, speed around Mach 0.8, co altitude at 25,000 feet. I am launching a single A54A Mach 47 on a PP position from 40 nautical miles in PDSTT. The total flight time of the Phoenix is 2 minutes exactly, and it impacted at Mach 1.06. Post launch, I moved to the reposition and I had to adjust the MSC filter, otherwise, I would have notched myself. The view shows immediately how this is not a good way to launch a missile in this scenario. Uh, perhaps it may work for a conversion, but that's not our objective. Our goal must be well clear when we decide the game plan to follow. Next, I am turning to collision course and launching following the same parameters. However, this time the time of flight went down to 1 minute and 56 seconds and the impact speed increased to Mach 1.22. That's a 15% increase flat, just by using a decent approach. This is not bad considering that we have launched at a TA constant of 43 right, which is definitely poor. Finally, let's introduce the concept of lead collision. As the name suggests, this is something similar to collision course, with the difference that it is not intended for the aircraft, but the missile. So how do we maneuver to take advantage of LC? Simple, we use our avionics. Most aircraft have in fact a specific means to tell the aircrew in which direction the pilot should turn to achieve lead collision. The ASC, acronym for Allowable Steering Error, you are watching now, is one of them. Simply put, when you are about to employ, center up the dot and fire. The values of lead collision can be approximated for certain missiles. For example, for the M7 Sparrow, lead collision tends to be half of the ATA. So if the target is 30 left, then turning 15 degrees towards the left helps the missile to achieve better results. De facto, we are turning towards the bisector of the ATA. So why are we turning into the target? Simply put, because the missile is much, much faster than our aircraft, and therefore, its collision geometry is different. 
If you're still confused, imagine firing an RPG number 3. Do you need as much lead as you would when running towards the target? No, not really. This rule of thumb works fine for the Sparrow, but different missiles have different characteristics. Back to the previous scenario, launching following the same parameters, we have a speed impact of Mach 1.23 and a flight time of 1 minute 52 seconds. The results did not much compared to collision, but it still improved, and is a huge improvement instead against the abysmal pure pursuit. I hope that this short video has shown you how the fantastic, or boring, depends on you, uh, topics discussed in part 2.1 actually have a concrete meaning and effects. And now that you are familiar with the fundamental tools of the geometry, you should finally fully understand why I put so much emphasis on it on my website and YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and take care.